very warm welcome to this 1.1 list session. My name is Els. Let me give you some context for those who may be joining us for the first time. Since May 2020, we have been hosting these sessions with the aim of sharing some insights and principles of Raja Yoga meditation, which is also called the Yoga of the Mind. This form of meditation is practiced by several of us working for One Point Consulting, an IT consultancy company based in London. I personally find this practice very beneficial, not only in the workplace, but also in my personal life. These half hour sessions are facilitated by experienced meditators from different professional backgrounds and from around the world. These sessions involve discussions on topics such as the power of the mind, the importance of resilience, how to deal with negative thoughts, but the sessions also include a brief meditation exercise. So far, we have had around 150 guest speakers who have contributed to this project, and we hope that many individuals will take benefit from these. The sessions have been recorded and they are available on YouTube. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Marcelo Wilk, who joins us from Colombia. Marcelo is a business consultant, a coach and author. He has worked as a business consultant and facilitator for several major companies in Latin America, Asia and Europe. He has been a fellow of the Oxford Leadership Academy and is still associated with this academy, as well as with the Union Consulting Group in Colombia. Marcelo lectures internationally on topics related to self-leadership, human values, and meditation. He is the author of the book, The Pathway Towards Leadership, which has been published in Spanish and Portuguese. As a national coordinator, Marcelo oversees the activities of the meditation centers in Colombia. So the topic for today is exploring the healing power of silence. So very warm welcome to you, Marcelo. Thank you so much, Els, and everyone who is, who is connected here. Um, I feel like in London because it's very cold here. <laughs> just, just a joke, just a joke. But it's 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 very pleasant. I really love London. I love the people there, and thank you very much for this invitation. Um, my talk today is in relation to silence, the healing power of silence. And um, many many years ago, we had a brilliant conference here in Bogota, where I live, the capital of Colombia. And the conference was given by someone who lives in London, in fact, uh, Genti, BK Genti. And the topic was the power of silence. It was a very unusual topic. And I live in Latin America. Latin America is not very famous for its silence. Latin Americans, we normally are kind of a cheerful bunch of people. And, uh, and so silence is not the main thing. And it was full, it was packed. The hall was completely packed. Um, in fact, it was so packed that half an hour before the time, there was a queue already because the hall was full. So those who came punctual, they couldn't enter. Anyway, I remember very well that, that lecture. <clears throat> we turned the lecture into a book. In fact, a small book called The Power of Silence in Spanish. El Poder del Silencio. And, uh, and it was quite inspiring. So on the basis of that experience, I remember very well, she started the lecture saying that normally people don't like silence because silence means you did something wrong. So you have to be quiet, shut up. So it's the shut up silence. And because of that, people don't see the benefits of silence. And that's what I'm going to talk to you today. So I'm going to use a, a kind of a matrix a little bit. So I'm going to talk about three levels of silence, three types of silence in terms of depth, 
and three results of silence. So if you explore the power of silence, what are the results? Because the lecture is on healing, so of course I'll be focused more on that. First of all, what are the levels of silence in terms of healing, in terms of your health? The first level is obvious. You don't talk. And uh, silence through the mouth, through noises in general that we make with our bodies, it's, it's something that you can attain. Sometimes it's not so easy. And many people, they are silent because, well, they don't live with anybody. So they are living by themselves. So, of course, they are silent. But when you get quiet with your mouth, something happens to your body. One of the main benefits in terms of healing is that when you get silence with your mouth, when you don't talk anymore for a while, you rest. And rest is something very important nowadays. We live in a world full of stress, anxiety, so many problems. Have you read the news today, headlines? So many problems, so many complications. Ah. So when I stop talking, then I rest a little bit, at least a little bit. But it's not enough, you know? However, it's the first step you can take. Um, in Brahma Kumaris, we, we used to have at least the habit of not talking before 6 a.m. So you used to keep very quiet until 6 a.m. So that you are rested. You feel fresh when finally, when you talk, you see your words have more meaning. The second type or level, sorry, level of silence is, should be the thoughts, but I'll, I'll leave that for the third. The second type, the level is the level of actions. And I'm not talking about being standing still. I'm talking about the type of actions you, you perform. Uh, I have seen many yogis around, and some of them, they walk like a camel, you know? And some, they are just like a breeze. And they just pass through your life in a very soft way. You don't even realize they are there. And I think that's a very powerful type of silence. When you are able to make your actions, don't scream what you are feeling. And you see the opposite. If someone is angry, for instance, they will slam the doors, they will make as much noise as possible. When you are calm, happy, joyful, you don't make so much noise, isn't it? And what happens to you when your actions are very subtle? You know, is that when, when your actions are subtle, if you have any sickness, you feel some little relief in relation to that sickness. In fact, when you are sick, you go and rest, you go lay down. So you decrease the level of movement for your body. But I'm not talking against the movement. It's okay to move your body. In fact, please move your body. <laughs> but, but the thing is, um, when you are laid down, when you are moving slowly, with focus, with determination, then you are not hurting your body. It's like you're giving a message to your body. I love you, I'm gentle towards you, I'm taking care of you. Experience. It's it's very powerful experience I have. So when I, I get sick, I start to, I get into another another mode of terms of movement. 
I really try to move like an angel would move in such a world we live. Try it. And now the third type of, of uh, silence I was talking before even is the silence of your mind, of thoughts. And again, I'm not talking about the mind in blank, but a mind that's only producing something which is relevant, which is meaningful. You know, one idea that I heard from many people, many yogis, is that when your, your mind are, is having wasteful thoughts, negative thoughts, uh, you know, thoughts that are toxic, so they are normally many, and their speed is very fast. But when you are having positive, elevated thoughts, when you are having thoughts of good wishes towards others, they are few and they are in a slow pace too. So the silence of mind is not about quieting your mind totally. It will be difficult. <laughs> I'm sure it will be difficult. But it is refocus the thoughts. So let me think in a different way. Let me think in a positive way, in a useful way, in a way that, that contributes something, that gives something. And that the main effect in terms of, of healing, uh, especially in a world full of depression and anxiety, that will decrease a little bit. If, if you have a depression or anxiety, which is a disorder, so it's clinical, so, of course, you have to, to do a treatment. But if you have a depression because uh, you broke up with someone or your, your, your football team didn't, didn't win, you know. So, well, that type of depression is also, it hurts, okay? Or you have anxiety about the economy of the UK. What will happen without Europe? You know, something like that. So then if you quieten your mind, That anxiety and depression also for you. Now, so these are the three types of silence I would like to explore with you. The words, actions, so actions more concentrated, more focused, and your mind with thoughts that are meaningful. In relation to that, they can have different levels of depth. Okay, so there are three different levels of depth. The first one is the physical one. And uh, it's quite good when you are silent. It creates some type of energy there. When you go into a house or inclu including into a temple. So only the silence, only the silence already heals you. It's automatic healing. Try, I challenge you, go to a temple of a religious belief, of a faith that you don't share. Go not during the, the, uh, the devotion, worship, or mass, or cult, but go in another time. And just feel, just take a bath onto that silence, and you feel how much that works on you. And okay, you don't like to go to a temple, go to a park. London is very famous for its parks. So go to a park, particularly a quiet one, totally silent one. And feel the healing. It will be automatic, okay? It will come naturally. So that silence, which is the silence of the environment, that will help a lot. But there is a second level of silence when, when you are really, really committed to silence and you, you are able to go into the depths of that silence so it doesn't matter the environment. And an extreme example of that is written in a book called Emotional Intelligence. And the book, it was brilliantly written by by an author in the United States, 
talks about the importance of developing this emotional intelligence. And there is a point of the book where there is a little short story about uh, the war in Vietnam. So it was talking from the point of view of American soldier. So they were shooting, you know. So here there were the Americans, the other side there were the Vietnamese. And they were shooting and shooting and shooting. And it seems that they were not going anywhere. <laughs> they were like stuck there. And then this soldier saw in the distance a group of monks, you know, Buddhist monks. They were coming towards the line of fire. Can you imagine? Uh, but they kept on shooting, shooting. But when these monks, they came, they were so silent. And it was automatic. People stopped, stopped shooting from both sides. No order, nothing. Nobody said anything. They just stopped shooting. And he says that they took forever <laughs> to cross the, the terrain. When finally they finished that, when finally the, the Buddhist monks left, nobody really wanted to fight, at least that day. And this is an extreme example, but it, it shows the depths of silence you can reach. If there is, so you can heal your family, your workplace, because if there is a conflict, if there is problem, and you go into the depths of silence, so you go into the silence of your mind and your mouth and your actions, but you go very deep inside yourself, you really experience the best of yourself, you experience the best of others, you can even meditate. So naturally, that will decrease the problems, whatever. You can even use that in a hospital. And BK Genty, I was mentioned the lecture before, she was saying how her father was in hospital and how she went there and she felt the vibration, the energy was not good. It was a hospital. So everybody was having bad thoughts. And she just decided to walk around the corridors, just that, in deep silence. And slowly she felt the vibration change. Try it. But there is an even deeper level, the deepest level. And uh, we are talking about the Buddhists, and they are experts in getting to that level. It's the level in which you go to the Nirvana. You go to the Nirvandam, you go to Parandam, you go to the, to the abode where the souls are there in total silence. And that's the level in which the soul heals. Souls in the world, they are wounded. They are really hurt. There are too many terrible things happening. And people are, have been unable to, to cope. Okay, people cope. But it's not in the nicest way. And that, that's the deepest level of silence you can reach. And you can just see the soul you are healing. Getting to, into a health level. So now you can face the situations. You can talk to that, that awful person there in my office but with a smile, with good wishes in your heart, at least you can, you can face that in a very good mood. Now, besides healing, there are three results, three main results of silence. And of course, they contribute also for healing. But again, I'm talking about that silence, you have to go deep. You have to really work on yourself. You have to really go inside the self. When I was taking the course of Brahma Kumaris of meditation, Raja Yoga meditation course, and you can take it, it's very easy to get, and it's free. Mm -hmm. And after that, about um, two weeks later, more or less, it was a holiday. And so they decided to do a silence retreat, a small one, just one day. And it was in the center in the school of Brahma Kumari. So I went there. 
I was just extremely new. I didn't know anyone. I was living so far. I had to take uh, transportation for two hours to reach that place. And the first time ever that I really experienced silence in that way. I'm a very silent guy. I'm an introvert. I come from an IT background, and uh, I, I like silence. But my silence was that, uh, you know, passive, aggressive silence type of person. So I used to complain a lot in my mind. I used to imagine I'm defeating someone, etc. So that day, however, I was able to experience full silence. I was able to, to go very deep inside the self. It was like I was, you know, merging into my own self. And that healing experience, I never, ever forgot. Even so, it was it's much more than 40 years now. But I still remember that, that opportunity life gave me. Try this three different levels of depth in terms of silence. Try go to a place where silence is there, a temple, a park, <clears throat> somewhere that you feel the silence. Sorry. Then try to go into the depths of your own silence. It doesn't matter the environment, whatever is happening there. But I don't advise you to go to a line of fire, okay? Just, uh, just go into the depths and you see the healing that you will be creating in the environment. And the third, uh, third type of level in terms of depth is just go beyond, much beyond, beyond anything you see, you touch, you feel, beyond the cold, beyond anything. And just have that wonderful experience of the deep silence anyone can ever experience. Just try it. Try it now. Don't stop thinking. Just focus the, the thoughts. You think of yourself in a world that there is no noise, no sounds. You can imagine lots of lights, points of light, and just feel I am light. I am that point of light. Try it every day, every day, even so it's just a minute because I know you are a very busy person. <laughs> but try it. It's very important. Now we're talking about results. I read said in terms of healing, whatever you can do. Uh, but it's important to understand the main outcomes of, of the practice of silence, at least from my experience. Probably you, if you are also experiencing silence, if you are experimenting with silence, so you probably have more outcomes to contribute for that. I think the first thing is clarity of mind. Um, and it's natural. You have to make a decision. What should I do in this situation? Should I do this? Should I do that? You go into silence, right? It's natural. You, you cut off from other people. You just go close the door. <laughs> And you just try to understand what's going on. Why do we need silence for that? Because when, when you have a, a glass of water, for instance, and uh, you have some objects there, if you leave the water quiet, those objects, they probably they'll go to the bottom or to the surface, but they will be still, still enough so you can take them out. So when you are in silence, naturally, your life is still now. So all the things, good and bad, they will start to show up. So you'll be able to understand the scenario in which you are. You'll be able to understand 
the different possibilities you have and which one will be the best. That's also part of healing because many of the sicknesses we have came from a very bad decision. <laughs> you ate the wrong things, you talked the wrong things, you are overworking. Now some people, they are working like 18 hours a day, like crazy. Since COVID, this is happening. And it's not good. It's really not good for the soul, for the person, for the family. You know, nobody, nobody gets much benefit from that. So when you do that silence, you have the clarity. So you can understand what's going on really. And then you can make some decisions. The second result or outcome from silence is a sense of control. Because noise and words and uh, music, loud especially, you know, I'm not talking about the bad sounds, sorry, the good sounds like good music or even the noise of rain, you know. I'm talking about that noise that really, that sound that really disturb you. You start to look at where you're coming from, you know. So when you are able to get in silence, whatever type, whatever level of that, you'll be able to have a sense of control on your own self. Sometimes we cannot control outside, but we can control at least inside. What is my response for that? Do it. Um, and that's quite important in life. That's a very important outcome. Because when I am in control, it's easy for me to heal to whatever is going on in my life. I can really work that out. Now, the third outcome you can get, um, it's for meditators, for those who meditate. So silence becomes like a background, like a scenario, like stage, a, in which you have wonderful experiences. If your mind is struggling with something, if you are not feeling so well, even physically, that will disturb your meditation. So, so when you experience a silence, you set the stage, you set the process, you set the platform, again, in whatever level of that you want, in whatever type of silence you want. And you are able to really, really feel the meditation. Because sometimes I see many people, many meditators nowadays, a meditation is like a Netflix program, you know, it's something that you watch, or it's a candy that you eat, it's nice, it's lovely, it's good, but they are not really making the endeavor for meditating. It, and meditation, we all know, really gives benefit when you make that effort to meditate. So silence will soften the effort. We make the effort very, very easy, very light. And then you can meditate, you can have wonderful experiences, and that will strengthen yourself. And of course, healing will be there always because Meditation is directly connected with medication, uh, medicine. So, so you have some some healing from that. The healing will happen in your personality, uh, in your way with dealing with other people, uh, in your body, whatever. But there will be healing there always. So these are the three main outcomes. Uh, and again, there are many more. Okay, so you can. You can create a list of 20 things that you can get from silence. But I just want to talk and the time is over now. <laughs> so, so the first one was the clarity of mind. 
And the second one I was talking about was the before the meditation one, that was the third one. So the second one was that point to, in which with the silence, you control yourself, you get self-control. And then the four meditations this will contribute, will, will be also reinforced by that meditation. Okay, I hope that that works for you. And if you are going through something, if you are going through something very difficult, like taste of broccoli, you know, it's not nice, it's bitter, get into silence and experience silence in whatever way you can, whatever time you can. Experience a silence with purpose, silence with awareness and see the results, okay? So I hope everything is great with you. I hope everything works very well for you from my heart. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Marcelo. Um, this was very interesting. Um, I've written down a few things for myself, and I really liked actually how you shared your experience of attending that one-day silence retreat. I think my feeling was that that experience was amazing for you. Um, but also in my own life, um, whenever I go in silence, I can really feel that stillness and that healing power. So it's really very, very special. And thank you for encouraging us to experiment with that uh, silence. And also interesting how you explained that actually negative thoughts are usually very fast. Any toxic thinking uh, is very fast and is very exhausting. And if we have positive thoughts, then that slows down the mind. So very, very interesting to see how that works and how the power of meditation and silence helps us to have clarity of mind, but also to have that peaceful experience. So thank you so much, Marcelo. And also to everyone uh, who joins us today, I hope you have enjoyed the session and we hope to see you again soon at the next 1.1 session. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you so much. Thank you, Marcelo.